Thank you a lot, um, Cordula. Um, it was a, a pleasure for me to, to present today our small experience in the Observatory of South Tyrol with the measurement of intensities and uh, satisfactions, or better said, in our case, it's more sensitivity towards uh, tourism activities. And I think there couldn't have been a better introductory uh, <laughs> Uh, speech uh, as the one you you made because you exactly mentioned the two aspects the intensity and the kind of uh, attitude of the local people towards tourism that I'm going to introduce um, right now in the presentation um, let me give you a very brief overview maybe those of you that have already seen a presentation of ours they know about uh, the region but maybe there are new observatories that uh, don't know where we are we're in the northernmost uh, region um, of Italy the red uh, one you see there we do have half a million inhabitants as a region and a lot of tourists as you can see the figures um, from 2019 and 2020 show um, more than 5 million arrivals and more than 20 million overnights per year. The interesting aspect I'd like to highlight in the presentation of today is the fact that in the 1980s, we had the first introduction of a moratorium to stop uh, or to limit the creation of new bad capacities because local policymakers were aware of the reduced amount of usable space we had in our alpine uh, region and they were starting to put limits to growth. This uh, first moratorium was developing for um, a lot of time and um, in, the in the beginning of this century it was a little bit changed and some uh, additional um, new bed capacities were possible just in certain conditions that made uh, the number of beds grow and nowadays exactly during these days uh, the local politicians the local government is deciding about a second limit to growth which will be uh, probably introduced uh, completely and finally um, in 2023 there has been uh, already an agreement about it but uh, they're really defining the details of it. And exactly by shaping this new moratorium, we were asked as an observatory, but also mainly as a research institute, uh, the Center for Advanced Studies of URAC Research, to give some insights to help decision makers to shape this future uh, moratorium. So the idea behind, or the question behind, was based on what criteria can we decide about the constant growth or the need to reduce growth uh, for our accommodation facilities um, in the destination I've mentioned. And our answer, of course, as a research institution was well based on evidence-informed decision-making. So we started from our baseline indicators coming from the observatory and we tried to uh, adjust them also to understand the needs of, uh, of the local uh, politicians and government to make sure that uh, we can respond to their, um, to their needs while keeping, of course, a very uh, clear and transparent way of measuring and um, a more scientific way of measuring. Let me just show the approach we had. So the approach was to combine, on the one hand, data about tourism intensities, and on the other hand, data about the acceptance of tourism from the local population to better define policies. Maybe some of you have in mind uh, a matrix that is very similar to this one, having the tourism intensity on the one line and on the other line, the regulation. This is the well-known Weaver matrix, for instance. So to establish that kind of regulation, we had this approach to consider also tourism acceptance because we were well aware that in some cases, there might be an overestimation of impact by locals, but in some other cases, there might be an underestimation. And just the tourism acceptance was not enough, but not enough was also the tourism in intensity per se. That's why we designed this approach. Of course, if there's low tourism intensity, if the environment allows it, and if there's a high tourism acceptance, as you can see in the matrix, possible tourism development should be enabled. If there's a low acceptance and a high development, so mass tourism, we should be very careful in planning new capacities. And the other two areas are areas where we have a question mark. So we should consider case by case what can happen. 
to, to make this approach more concrete, we had to measure both on the one hand, the exposure or the intensity, on the other hand, the acceptance. Um, I will keep it short, um, but we tried to uh, analyze the intensity based on two indicators. On the one hand, the relationship between overnight stays and uh, the uh, possible uh, population that is living on site. And on the other hand, the relationship between um, the bed capacity and the available surface. So we use these two indicators that you see in the second square uh, of the slide, bed concentration and tourism intensity. We were weighting these two indicators at equal levels, so we had to standardize them and put them together to have a, a final classification of municipalities. So this is how it worked in a more specific way. So calculation of the first indicator, tourism intensity, calculation of the bed density, standardization based on mean and standard deviation, and then calculation of what we call tourism exposure. It resulted in a kind of ranking of uh, the most intensive um, communities and uh, regions in our, um, our province and the, the less touristic ones. We can classify them according to different statistical methods. The quartile says the first 25%, the middle 50% or the highest uh, 25%, we could use percentiles or even rank them based on their um, tourism exposure. The result can be also seen in this um, map. Uh, here you can see a first calculation with it and you can see the municipalities having high exposure, medium exposure and low exposure. After that, we had a consultation with stakeholders that highlighted a possible distortion effect of using the entire surface of the municipality to, cal to, to calculate one of the two indicators. They suggested, and we were very um, surprised, but also we're very happy to have this suggestion. They suggested to make, a second cal to make a second calculation using the settlement area. Because of course, in mountain regions, you might have a very small settlement area compared to the area of the municipality. And this is the result. So you can see by comparing the two maps that there's some uh, differences. So based on the indicator we use, we might have also different classifications. And this is very important to be aware of, I think. Um, this is uh, another way of ranking municipalities just by having um, a kind of uh, rank without having any categories, so not high, medium, low, but uh, just uh, a shades of, of colors. But then what uh, was our results when it comes to uh, the exposure? What about the sensitivity? So the second part. There we developed um, uh, a measurement system together with the Curtin University of Australia, by the way, another observatory um, of this um, network. And this sensitivity index was based on the nine aspects you see here on top of the slide. So the economic prosperity perceived by locals um, about their community, the community vitality, the atmosphere, the harmony between the urban environment and the landscape, the affordable housing, you will find many topics that were coming up in the introductory presentation as well. The acceptability of traffic load, the trust in institutions, the local satisfaction with tourism, and finally, the support for the future growth of tourism. The interesting part of this research is that uh, we developed it within uh, the project I was mentioning before. So this uh, kind of uh, supportive project we did for the regional government, but the survey we were designing together with the uh, University of Curtin was done, was then used also by local destinations to apply for a GSTC certification. And we have three destinations that have achieved this point to get certified. So there was a cooperation between very different institutions. On the one hand, the input from the Curtin University, we were designing the sample. So we were deciding how many people to interview, how to spread the questionnaire and things like that. And then the, the operational part was, um, was conducted by the um, local DMO, so the IDM in our case, and by the very specific uh, valet that was involved for this first pilot project. We had more than 300 questionnaires, with a random sample and a good, I, I would say, a good sample. And uh, we had a good uh, response rate, I have to admit. These are some highlights. I will be very quick, but just to give you an overview about how we could represent results. We had many more questions, the ones I was mentioning before, the nine fields, but I've taken just a couple of them. 
to highlight the results. The harmony of the urban environment uh, compared to the landscape was perceived to be okay. Uh, the level of traffic load was perceived to be rather high. The affordability of housing was not a strength. Uh, indeed, we know that um, the prices of rentals and also um, the, the buying of a house is very expensive in some in some regions, and it's one of the most uh, perceived impacts, actually. And finally, we asked also to to evaluate the perceived level of sustainability of the of the destination, and we had this result for this region. Um, I mentioned before for this valley, and actually. Uh, what we notice is that this indicator is very hard to interpret because at the end, uh, it's a very uh, comprehensive evaluation. But uh, in the next um, pilot projects we will do with other destinations, other local um, uh, valleys uh, and regions of, of our land, we will split it into more parts uh, to assess the environmental, the social and the economic aspects of tourism to be more precise. Finally, a last highlight we also, um, thanks to a hint coming by the destination, we also added this question about the use of um, uh, local facilities. So the use by inhabitants, just to know, I, I'm, I'm finishing completely, um, just to know about their um, attitude. And as you can see, the gray line stands for not using uh, the facility. Most of the facilities with specific exceptions were not used. By, uh, by locals, which is, of course, a weakness point for in terms of um, acceptance and sustainability. To conclude, I say um, a comprehensive assessment of both intensives and intensities and sensitivities is quite innovative and necessary. Generating evidence about these two drivers, these two factors is not so easy, and it needs a match between measurement instruments and policy making. And that's what leads me to the final statement that ev evidence-informed policymaking is definitely a co-production process and we need to embrace not only academics but also policymakers and many other stakeholders because they have really a lot to suggest and we need to be open to, to accept their suggestions while still keeping being professional and scientifically uh, valid and having valid results. Thank you for your attention, and I thank also the entire team of the Observatory for working with us on this topic.